Welcome back. Let's spend a little time talking about problems related to health and health care, physical and mental health. First, what are strategies for being healthy? Let's say, first of all, what does it mean to be healthy? Well, the functional model of health sees the body as a machine. Uh, illness occurs when something goes wrong with the machine. So we have curative medicine, which is where if something goes wrong, you fix the machine. But there is also preventive medicine, where we attempt to keep the machine from malfunctioning in the first place. Historically, curative medicine has been the norm in the U.S., but preventive medicine is becoming much more common, especially with women dealing with the reproductive system, breast cancer, etc. For men, also being somewhat more common in terms of heart disease and some forms of cancer. Okay, what is the medical industrial complex? Like most industries in the U.S., healthcare is a private industry controlled by market forces of supply and demand. You have to turn a profit to stay in business. Per capita spending on healthcare reached about $6,500 in 2005. In other words, if you average all the money that is spent on healthcare in the U.S. across the whole population of the U.S., you would find that we're spending $6,500 per person each year on healthcare. It was $7,290 in 2007 and well over $7,500 in 2009. So the cost has just kept going up and up and up. Why the big growth in healthcare costs and spending? There are basically four reasons. First, more elderly people. Increase in percentage of the elderly population leads to greater medical care in the population overall. Second, increasing prices of prescription drugs. Prices have risen an average of 9% each year since 1980. Third, development and proliferation of advanced technology. Um, we've improved the treatment of disease, but it comes at a price, namely equipment and skilled technicians to work the equipment. And then fourth, increased lawsuits over medical malpractice have increased the costs for providers, doctors, nurses, etc., to purchase malpractice insurance. So is it worth the cost? Are we getting what we pay for? It doesn't appear that we are. Consider this. With all the costs converted to $2,007, just to keep things even, we were spending $7,290 per person on health care in the U.S. In Japan, that number was $2,581. In the U.K., it was $2,992. In Sweden, $3,323 and in Canada, $3,895. These are all comparable countries with similar life expectancies and similar economic development, but we're spending almost twice as much as Canada and more than twice as much in the other countries. That's why the Affordable Care Act, also pejoratively known as Obamacare, was and is so groundbreaking. It's the first time a bill was finally passed that said, you know, we need to do something about these out-of-control costs. Now, I'm not here to pass judgment one way or the other on the Affordable Care Act. You can read about it and make up your own mind. And certainly, it's had its fair share of problems getting going. But consider that every major new government initiative has had major speed bumps getting up to speed. Everything from Social Security under Franklin Delano Roosevelt to No Child Left Behind under George W. Bush. What I will say about the Affordable Care Act is that if you don't like it, or if you have a problem with it, Wait a little while beside, before you decide what you think of it. Give it some time to start doing its thing and for Congress to pass whatever changes need to be made to the act where there are holes or speed bumps. Then see what you think of it. It might turn out to be a lot better than the detractors have said. It might turn out to be worse. Just be patient and give it some time before passing judgment. Okay, enough on that. We can discuss it more in, in the discussion forums. Why is health a social problem? Consider the interactionist approach. The concept of health is as much a social construction as a physical state. We are told that high-fiber, low-fat diets are healthy, which was not always necessarily understood even just 20 or 30 years ago. We're told don't drink too much, don't smoke at all, don't do drugs, exercise, etc. We know that these are healthy, but they haven't always been thought to be necessary. Medical research, as well as politics and culture, has changed how we define a healthy lifestyle. How does health 
differ among groups? The short answer is it differs most often by behavioral differences between groups, though there are some genetic differences as well that the medical community is now only now really coming to understand. Um, by race, uh, African Americans have higher mortality rates than whites, have a six year shorter life expectancy, have higher infant mortality rates. This last fact is attributed to inadequate prenatal care among many African American females. More than twice as many black females than white females receive no prenatal care whatsoever. But before anyone goes running off to tell their friends that African Americans are just not good parents, remember that a person's race is correlated with their social class. This may not be so much a problem with African Americans as it is with people who just can't afford medical care. Okay, by socioeconomic status, and this is closely associated with race in the U.S., here's some recent survey data comparing low-income homes with average-income homes. Two groups, one making an average family income of $14,000 per year, the other making an average family income of $50,000 per year. 20.7% of the first group rated their health as poor, while only 3.8% of the latter group rated their health as poor. 24% of the poorer group were restricted by chronic illness, while only 9% of the richer group were restricted by chronic illness. Now these are just correlations, not necessarily causal relationships, but it still makes you wonder. And then lastly, health differs among groups by sex. Interestingly, until quite recently, most medical research was performed on men. Almost all was, actually, until it was a, uh, unless it was a study specific to women's physiology. For example, until just a few years ago, almost all research on heart disease was conducted on men. Yet we know that health varies by sex. For example, deaths from heart disease, stroke, and cancer are 60% higher among males than females. This could be attributed, for example, to the fact that on average men smoke more than women. But women do develop heart disease. It just happens later in life for them. And again, no one really seems to know why, since there's very little research on the subject right now. One thing we do know is that because such health problems vary by sex, it behooves us to understand why women experience fewer of these health problems so that it might help inform new preventions or treatments for everyone. So there's just a few <laughs> thoughts and statistics to get you started on this chapter. And I'll see you online.